So welcome to Carpool Chatty Okay. I'm pleased today to be joined by Kim Fletcher. So welcome Kim. Thank you, I feel welcomed. Why don't you tell us about your job? Um, well, I work in housing um, for Christchurch and East Dorset. Um, I'm a housing solutions officer in homelessness prevention. So really I assist and advise anybody in Christchurch or East Dorset who has any kind of housing issue, which includes tenancy issues, relationship issues, right down to actual homelessness itself and, mm -hmm. and trying to prevent that from happening and potentially um, keep them where they are to finding a, a different housing solution and um, finding them somewhere to live. So that's pretty challenging stuff then? It is, it is very challenging, yeah, especially in this uh, climate. And homelessness in Christchurch and East Dorset is actually going up at the moment, I think. It is, yeah, we've had record um, footfall in August. It was it was quite a high number. I, I don't know exactly what it was, but we were all extremely, extremely busy and yeah. we're quite lucky in that, in a, particularly in the prevention, homelessness prevention team, we're a very close team and we all support each other. So, you know, you, you know that you can always rely on your colleagues in our department because we're quite close like that. Yeah. So what's the best bit about the job? Um, I think the best bit, apart from what I've just mentioned, with us all being very supportive and on the same sort of page in terms of professionalism and that kind of thing, um, and knowledge, I, I, the best thing has got to be when you get a result for somebody, especially when you've worked really hard or you're trying to work on a landlord or trying to get mend a relationship or whatever, um, it's when you get that result and when you're closing the case and you're able to put a new address down on the system or say that you've prevented their homelessness. I mean, yeah. You know, we don't get very much thanks for it, but it doesn't matter because it, it's kind of the feeling that you know that you've prevented yeah. somebody from becoming homeless. We well, do get the odd box of chocolates. But, yeah. yeah, but I'm sure the people <laughs> themselves are grateful. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And no job's perfect. No. So what's not so good? Um, I think I'd say almost in direct contrast to that, it's when you can't when you can't get that result and it's it's usually down to legislation le sorry legislation which we have to work to um, if there are clients who don't have a priority that is they maybe don't have children or they don't have any disabilities and they're working hard and you can see they're trying to earn a living but we just we don't have a budget for people who are about to become homeless really who who don't have access to any kind of benefits yeah and the hardest thing to say to somebody is that there's really nothing that I can do for you except provide you with mm. advice and that's that's quite that's quite disheartening so when we can't help people in that situation what are their options with well we do have external agencies that we work with and who, are, who support and help with private rented solutions and, and those kind of things but you know what the ideal situation is that we'd be able to help everybody and you, you can't you can't yeah. help absolutely everybody yeah. we, we do what we can and most people are, are quite understanding but of course then you, you have the people that aren't that understanding and then that makes the job quite difficult which again goes back to having a good team around us because we're all quite emotionally supportive to each other as well it can be quite challenging when it's people's yeah. lives involved really yeah yeah now if you weren't a housing solutions officer what would yeah. be your dream job my dream job Okay, well, don't laugh, but I wish I was a professional actress, actor, if I wasn't a housing solutions officer. That's what I wish I'd done. I'd, I studied drama at GCSE at school and then I just kind of left it. And then I didn't pick up acting again until I was in my mid-twenties. And I just, I love doing it so much. It's something that I would have wanted to have studied professionally, really. I should have gone to university and and followed that path. Like, if I could do it again, yet, I would. That? No. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> no, there's no, we're done there. But you are involved in some local groups. Yes, you? yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm um, involved in um, Arena Theatre. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Um, is on at the moment. Good. And um, have you got a partner? Well, I'm supporting. I haven't got a part part, but I have had I have had parts, and I I really enjoy it. It's great. Good. So that's obviously something you do outside of work. It is. What sort of other things do you do? Um, I run. I'm a short distance runner. I do five, ten k's. I did do a half marathon last year, but the training nearly killed me, so I don't think I'll do that again. Um, but yeah, I like to run. I run two or three times a week, and um, keeps me fit, keeps me 
sane, okay. keeps my husband and children sane. And Christchurch and East Dorset is a lovely place to be able to live and work. It's a beaut. Favourite spot? I think my favourite spot would be the, it's Stampit Marsh, but it's a specific bit of Stampit Marsh. On a Friday, I used to go running every Friday lunchtime and I'd run when the weather was nice past the hut and then you get to the very end you go through all these horses and yeah. it's just it's beautiful and then when you get to the end you stood at the kind of the little estuary bit the water bit and the view you can see Hengisbury Head on an amazing day you can see all the harbour it's just the most beautiful spot I just used to stand there sometimes I'd sit on the bench just have my music on and just just yeah. listen to the sounds of nature and just chill right so your favorite tune well, I have, I have lots because I'm a bit of a lover of music, but something that reminds me of my childhood and it's just a cracking song is Road to Nowhere by the Talking Heads. Good one. Thanks, Kim.